college basketball was Georgetown and Syracuse at the Garden in the 80s. That was the main event, and that was John Thompson and Jim Beheim. And we are extremely grateful to Coach Beheim for jumping on here and joining us for a moment live to remember that rivalry and, and your longtime friend, John Thompson. Coach, thank you very much for this. I, I know that this is a, a difficult morning, and I, I would just like to hear your thoughts uh, this morning on the sad news. Well, it's hard, you know, really hard right now. Um, you know, we had, the, you know, the toughest rivalry you can possibly have for a few years. And, uh, you know, North Carolina Duke is what everybody talks about in basketball. And I think it is the greatest rivalry over a long period of time. But for about 10 years, uh, Syracuse Georgetown was, there was nothing quite like it. And John built that really out of nothing. You know, Mike, it's to build a program at Kentucky or Duke or North Carolina, people have done it before. People will, will do it again. But what John did at Georgetown, uh, with the help of the start of the Big East, Dave Gavitt, but what John did was uh, no one could ever see coming. And, uh, you know, he was an imposing figure. And he willed his team to play a certain way. And he set an example, a standard for defensive basketball teams that, you know, coaches have tried to replicate, rep, replicate ever since he was there. I mean, that's what coaches build their teams on. And, uh, you know, Bob Knight did it in Indiana, but John Thompson did it at uh, Georgetown. And everybody followed after that. And he set an example for coach all coaches. Uh, I think you can you can certainly say African American coaches, uh, what you have to do, what you have to be. Uh, but he set an example for all coaches. He was a great defensive basketball coach, as good as anybody, the best defensive teams that I've ever played against by a by a lot. And uh, he he set the standard and you can't as you said you can't really over exaggerate what John did and uh, we became great friends I mean uh, it's still a rivalry such as Georgetown but John and I became great friends after uh, after <laughs> a few years at, at the end of our when we were playing each other and then you know up until today but he was uh, one of a kind. Uh, there's nobody like John Thompson. There really isn't, and uh, I don't think there ever will be. Uh, it's it's hard. Like I said, it's hard to over exaggerate. He was a bigger than life figure, and uh, he brought change to college basketball, and he empowered a lot of African American coaches and kids. Uh, to come in and be the best, you know, be the best you can be, and uh, you know, it's hard to it's hard to even to, to quantify talk about it right now. It's it's just you know hard to put put into words. I did the best I could, but it's really hard uh, to put it into words. He. I mean, they talk about Mount Rushmore of coaches, and and John Thompson is on it. You know, he, he's on it for for a lot of reasons, but for for certain because he's one of the coaches you have to talk about when you talk about the great coaches in college basketball. Jim Beheim is with me on Get Up. The news is still very fresh, Jim. I so appreciate. Your, your willingness to do this. And I, I said earlier this morning that it feels like there were really two separate stories this morning. There is John Thompson, the basketball coach, and all that he accomplished, and he is in the Hall of Fame for that. But with Coach Thompson, there was so much more to it. And I wonder, for the younger people in our audience, if you could describe your recollections of, of some of the battles that he fought, particularly Proposition 48. Jay Billis brought up the time he walked off the floor. You talked about how he empowered young African-American athletes. Right now, we, we're at a, at a particular moment yeah. where that is so prominent in the conversation. Uh, many people may not know about what he did in the 80s. H how do you remember all of it? Well, he did it all before anybody. And, you know, uh, what the NBA players did was, was, was you know, was, was really noteworthy this week and what other athletes have done this summer. 
But John did that all by himself, virtually. You know, he had some help. John Cheney uh, certainly comes to mind. But John just took it out by himself. It was a horrible rule, a racist rule, uh, because, you know, when Prop 48 hit, people, I don't have to get into the details, but it was really uh, 90% of the people affected were, were African-American kids, and John wasn't having it. And uh, he was not afraid to walk out at a time when that wasn't something that anybody would have thought about and uh, to stand up for what was right and for for African-American kids. And, you know, that's what he did. And he continued to do that his entire career. He was, a, you know, it wasn't, he was a great basketball coach. Don't, uh, we don't want to sell that short, but he was a, a leader in the game and in life, and you know, in today's world, he would be a, a huge addition to today's world. He would uh, set a standard like no other would be able to, and uh, there's no question the impact he had on all coaches, but especially African American players, kids, and coaches. That's who people looked up to. That's who people from the cities, that's where the Georgetown shirts were. They were inner cities. Those kids wore them all over the place, and they wanted to be like Georgetown. They wanted to be strong. They wanted to be tough. They wanted to do it their way, and that's what John Thompson did. He did it his way, and he showed that it could be done for everybody, and you can't, you just can't overestimate the impact he had on all of uh, all of us, all coaches, and uh, especially uh, African-American kids in the city. That's who they looked up to, John Thompson. 